What's going on guys, this is Joe Young, coming at you with another video for the week. And this week I wanted to give you guys an update on my Planet Reef Tank Rack. It's been a month since the setup, so you guys are probably dying to know what's going on, how are the plants doing, how are the fish doing, and how is everything just, you know, acclimating to the new system. About a month ago, I didn't have any livestock, I just barely started adding the macroalgae into the tank. I just started seeding the tank with a bunch of pods. And then the tank was kind of barely going through a cycle phase, uh, which took about like two weeks. And it had like very small parameters of ammonia, in which case I just started putting in some snails to help control some of the algae. This planet reef tank is actually set up with two tanks on the very top, one tank in the middle, and then one sump at the very bottom. So the bottom is a trigger sump that I'm using to house all the uh, mechanical and biological media. I'm using pond matrix to house a lot of the beneficial bacteria and there is also some live rocks on the upper tanks. Now I opted to use both chamber as a refugium or a refugium style uh, setup. So one chamber has shado and as you can see uh, I only kept like about a baseball size shado. I actually had a lot more which I actually sewed off recently um, and I plan on you know once it kind of gets full I will you know sell them off condense it down to smaller and then kind of do the same thing over and over that way other people can get a chance to you know have some of these macroalgaes and on the other chamber I'm growing clarpa along with a few dragon's breath uh, in the far back I actually had a couple extra uh, dragon's breath from the top tank that I put down here just to see which I guess light will help it grow a lot faster in my previous setup I wasn't successful in terms of growing them so I really wanted to try out different lights different setups to see uh, which works better for them. And the lights for both of these are Kesso H80. Uh, they're designed to help grow macroalgae um, straight up. And for the most part, it's doing pretty good, but I've seen some other LEDs that actually do better. But since I had these around, I went ahead and just put them in there. Finally, the return pump is a Ecotech Vector M1 pump. It's set to about two or three bars. I forget how many, three bars actually. So it can actually handle uh, four bars, but at four bars, it's like, you know, at max in terms of the overflow boxes. All right, so moving on to the second tier. The second tier is the 33 gallon long tank. And in this setup, I decided to go all bare bottom. Uh, this is where I'm gonna be housing all of my corals, my anemones, um, and other things that I wanna grow and try. I figured, you know, it's easier to clean, easier to maintain if it's just bare bottom. And also like you can just have a bunch of stuff all over the place. So currently in the setup, I have uh, a few rose bubble tip anemones that are housing five uh, black storm uh, clownfish. Originally, I did have six um, due to bullying. Uh, one of them didn't make it uh, in terms of the actual transfer. And so I'm hoping that these five remaining uh, clownfish kind of get together and you know play it nice um, there's a lot of space for them to run they can hide in the anemones there's like plenty of space on the anemone all over the place all right so there's actually a bunch of extra uh macroalgae in the tank here um i you'll, you'll see in a little bit when i go up to the top it's actually filled so the stuff that i have available for sale is actually uh, set aside and these are just extra macroalgae so what i do is i just actually put them in the same tank here so that the uh, purple tang can actually eat it. Uh, the purple tang loves macroalgae and you'll see the purple tang kind of munch on the macroalgae slowly. And this macroalgae here will probably last that purple tang probably a month or more, probably two months. Uh, that purple tang has been fat, literally eating macroalgae every day. Um, it's just really bulky. And because of, um, because of the extra macroalgae and also the flakes and whatnot that's in the tank, the tang has grown and colored up very nicely. It's really nice and purple. Um, loving the color and the yellow, you know, tail is just really, really, really nice. So I'm happy that the purple tang is doing very well in this setup and it's eating uh, like it's, you know, it's last meal. It's like crazy. So the lights in this tank is two Ecotech uh, XR15 Pros. This is the Gen 4 version. Um, had no issues, no complaints with these uh, LEDs. Love them. I actually have a lot of them um, and it grows you know coral like crazy it you know the bubble tip anemone loves it uh, the actual macroalgae actually grows really well in this light or under this light setup as well 
Finally, we're moving to the very top of the rack. So we have two ADA 60P. Each tank is about 17 gallons, so slightly under 20 gallons. The LEDs are also ADA Aqua Sky 601. Um, these are amazing LEDs. These lights are able to grow a lot of my high tech uh, plants for fresh water, so I decided to try them on the macroalgae just to see if they grow um, better, worse. And so far within the month, it's insane. You can see it right here. Like, this tank is insane. Like, the right side, uh, when I first planted it, if you go back uh, on the previous video, it's like, you know, a couple little stems, and now it's just taken off. The plants itself are, are really happy. You know, these are more Coloropas. Uh, these are the fern version. The leaves are, not, are, are jagged pretty much. We also have some Dragon's Breath in here as well. Uh, this tank only houses two clownfish. So these are my original OG pairs. These are snowflake clownfish along with a peppermint shrimp and a couple snails to help control the algae in the tank. And then moving to the tank right next to it, um, there's probably a huge contrast difference here. This tank is a lot more bare. Initially, I wanted to set this tank up with more of the red macroalgaes and different types of red macroalgaes. Uh, and I may end up keep doing that. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, what I'm actually trying to grow in here along with the dragon's breath here is the seagrass. In the past, I have not been successful in terms of growing seagrass. Um, I decided to try it again just because we are in a different setup plus a different light. And I think these lights are doing the trick because, you know, we have a lot of new growth uh, on the seagrass. They tend to melt or they I, I tend to get like really bad batches every time I buy them from, you know, whoever has them. And whoever has them is like really only a couple people. And, you know, they usually collect them from, you know, the ocean or somewhere else. And it's just horrible uh, when they come in. So that is the main plant that I'm actually growing along out here, along with the uh, Dragon's Breath. Uh, this tank itself houses um, the maroon pair. So we have a Lightning Maroon Clownfish, and then we also have a Golden Nugget Maroon Clownfish. Both of these guys are probably my second OGs uh, in the setup. Uh, they've been with me for a while, and, you know, they, they're they doing really well. The, the maroons are just super mean, to be honest, So, but... Uh, I really like the colors. I really like their attitude. They're really, really nice. And this tank setup is perfect for them, especially it's just them. Um, I do have, uh, again, a uh, peppermint shrimp in here. Uh, I haven't seen it for a while, so I'm kind of worried. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it was in the rocks the last time I threw it in there. And also they have some snails in here to help control the algae, of course. Now, if you take a step back and you look at both of these tanks, you'll probably notice something really different and weird so initially when i started aquascaping these tanks i did a really basic you know couple stones um around the overflow box or i'm sorry under under the overflow box just because it's in the dark area lights not getting in there decided to you know put some you know rocks just to have some character in it and all the sand bed was actually flat if you look on the right side it was something similar to that where it's super flat right now as you can see the left side it's just mountains you can just see like different uh waves and this is just due to the clownfish the clownfish actually loves to kind of just move stuff around if they don't like it they'll literally pick up a plant you know place it over here if they don't like the sand they'll dig up the sand put more sand on this side it's really interesting because uh my original snowflake clownfish they're actually content with their setup and they really only move a couple of the plants around. I'll see them pick up, you know, one plant and move it this way, pick up another plant and move it that way. But in terms of the sand, it seems like they are happy uh, with the sand. But in terms of the maroon clownfish, they are not happy with the sand. They are moving it all over the place. They're giving it their own character. And the, th the funny thing is, like, I would go back in there and I would kind of adjust it and they'll do the same thing. They'll just mess it all up again. So right now I'm just kind of letting them do their own thing. Um, they can kind of design their own little house. They're basically aquascaping this tank for me. All right, guys, and that's all I have for you guys for this week. I hope you guys enjoy uh, this week's update on the Planet Reef tank. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, until next time, guys, peace.